Welcome to Savvy Savage Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Salvati. I have Lee Camp is here tonight. He's a commentator and a comedian. Lee, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances, I got to tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this neo-McCarthyism, this censorship thing is uh, it's no joke. So why don't we start with um, you explaining to everyone what happened a couple days ago with RT. Like, how did you find out that RT was, they were going to shut RT down? And was there any type of communication that you received from RT ahead of time? Sure. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with me, I'm uh, I host a t or hosted a TV show called Redacted Tonight for eight years, uh, 375 episodes. If you count my interview show, over 500 episodes, and uh, it's a comedy and news, uh, definitely from the left wing, anti-war, anti-imperialist. Uh, but despite the fact that I'm or was on RT America, which is uh, funded by the Russian government, I. Uh, I'm an American in America covering American news, and I was never told what to say, was never censored, was never uh, uh, told not to say anything. I wrote all my own, all, own words, unlike pretty much every other comedy news show you know on the planet uh, that has teams of writers, producers. I, I mean, I wrote everything I said. So an immense amount of freedom, kind of unheard of, and RT America was really the only network on television, on actual TV across America, that where I could uh, do exactly that, precisely that. And that's why I was there. It's also why other people were there, like Chris Hedges and Jesse Ventura, et cetera. Anyway, um, coming up uh, in a few days, it'll be two weeks ago, uh, the... We were told, well, you know, on Wednesday, everything seemed like it was going fine. On Wednesday, we were told, don't... Uh, don't nothing will go to air that day and then they said they'd have more for us thursday we come into a staff meeting uh thursday and they say that everything's over grab your stuff see you later there was no explanation given um the for the for the most part the mainstream media completely ignored it uh there's been a few articles but in terms of you know the 24 7 wallpaper coverage of cnn etc there's basically been zero coverage uh, you know, no defense from fellow journalists, no defense from, for the most part, I mean, at least in the mainstream, no defense from uh, so many other networks that could easily be next in this purging of dissent, uh, purging of dissident views, purging of anything that's adversarial to the U.S. war machine. And and in the little few articles that were that are out there, they act like, oh, you, RT America just decided to shut down because they lost one of their distributors. But to me, that rings completely hollow. They, they could have kept running for many reasons. They, they uh, had other platforms. They were big online. Uh, so there's plenty of people still seeing their content. They had plenty of funding, at least for several months, if not a year. And they, uh, you know, had plenty of staff. Even if they needed to cut back a little to only some of the shows, they could have done that, which they did not. And there was also no mumblings of them ever coming back. It was... It was very clear that it was over. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. Um, when I spoke with to Tara Reed last week, I was wondering that too. Like, would they ever come back? And what was really weird too is that when they announced that RT America was shutting down for a couple of days, they were still on YouTube. And then yeah. now I see that's no longer the case as well. Yeah, which which kind of has a whole other level of like dystopian Orwellian holy God, are we really at this point kind of feeling to it that all of the back episodes for years, I mean, I was there eight years, but it goes back farther than that. Um, everything is, is banned now. If you go to Redacted Tonight's YouTube page, you just see a thing that says banned in your country. And as far as I've heard, that pretty much goes for every country now. And it it, it is kind of a, a amazing, like erasure of history of of the content that was there. And and on top of that, within the span of about two days, uh, the show was, my show was canceled, all the pack videos deleted, and my personal podcast, Moment of Clarity, deleted off Spotify. Um, and, and so this all happened within the span of a few days, which also shows like cross-coordination of, 
of corporations like Spotify, corporations like YouTube, which is owned by Google, and our federal government. They clearly were all coordinating in some manner to make sure this all happened fairly simultaneously, uh, which is, I mean, honestly, it should be incredibly disturbing to anyone who thinks we should have even a modicum of freedom of press, freedom of speech um, on these platforms. And and you don't have to agree with anything I say. I happen to be anti-war, anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist. And I made it clear on, on my videos that I was opposed to Putin's invasion of uh, Ukraine, but I also am not a child, and I can talk about the the context of why this is happening: the expansion in NATO, the U.S. backed coup of 2014, etc. So, unless you're a child and you can't hear context, I don't think that should be a problem. But again, you don't have to agree with anything I've ever said to understand how how dangerous and and just uh, I mean, really backwards facing this is. Yeah, and it's also um, the hill which is on the corporate algorithm, they were suspended about a week ago um, on YouTube for words yeah. that they actually didn't even say. It was a video that they were playing from Fox News of Trump speaking, and they were suspended because of the information that came from Fox News. And, and they didn't even say those words. I mean, they're back up and running now, but I just saw earlier today, which I'll be talking about this tomorrow, Kim Iverson, now her channel just received mm -hmm. a suspension. So- yeah. yeah, this isn't something to this isn't something that we should just, I guess, bat our eye at. Like this is really serious. And a lot of people, I think we're gonna see more people starting to get uh these suspensions or taken down. Um, I don't know if you saw this as well, but I saw Abby Martin, all of her videos yep. are gone. Yep, all of her back episodes of Breaking the Set, which was an amazing and kind of groundbreaking show that lasted for three years. Uh, those are all banned as well. And yeah, I mean, like you said, I, I, I wonder whether people understand what you mean by the corporate algorithm. Uh, th there are, th 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 it speaks to how this has been going on for a while. There are uh, channels and, and YouTube channels that are connected to kind of corporate America that receive favorable treatment in a very large way. Uh, this is why you don't really see suspensions of Fox News YouTube videos, uh, despite how egregious some things may be coming out of Fox News or coming out of CNN or MSNBC. Uh, they never seem to be impacted by any of this. And, you know, it was weird for The Hill to actually have that happen because they, for the most part, are given that kind of exemption of, oh, you're one of the, you know, good children of corporate America, so you don't have to worry about these type of suspensions and, and uh, banning that we are uh, perpetrating against other channels. Um, and, and this is not just YouTube, obviously. This is, this is ongoing for several years now. My Facebook page, which used to be my biggest platform, um, essentially became sa shadow banned around 2016. I was gaining 5,000 followers a week. I had 330,000 followers, and all of a sudden, I gained zero. And I, most of my posts are seen by something like 0.1% of my followers. So it, you, you spend years building up these platforms, building up a, a voice for your, uh, you know, what it is you do as a content creator. And then the, to, to mix my metaphors, the carpet is pulled out from under you and the sand is eroded out from under you by a massive wave of, of censorship. Some of it clear, you know, a banner that says banned in your country. But much of it not clear, much of it quietly done. You know, there's no one I, I can't point to any warning label as to why my Facebook page was shadow banned. But it's very evident that it happened. 100 percent. And I want to get your opinion on this because I don't think anyone should be removed. I don't think anyone should be deplatformed, whether I agree with what they say or not. But I, I, I have to ask uh, Joe Rogan, Spotify stood by him which I totally understand, but at the same time, they remove you and they remove Tara Reid. So does that come across as kind of like hypocritical to you? Of course, wildly hypocritical. Uh, and I don't even, I don't think Joe Rogan should have been removed, but uh, I mean, which he hasn't. Uh, actually, that's one of the things I point to as kind of hilarious is that like a lot of people are like, uh, for, you know, I'm, I'm talking about comedians because I'm, I'm a comedian who, kind of does news the way Joe Rogan's a comedian who kind of does some news. And, you know, people go, oh, well, well, Joe Rogan's been, uh, you know, canceled or Dave Chappelle's been canceled. And I'm like, no, 
they haven't. They're on platforms with million, <laughs> like the largest platforms in the world getting paid hundreds of millions of dollars. They have not been canceled. I, on the other hand, literally have had my show, my channel, all my old videos all deleted. So it's funny that people act like the people who haven't been canceled have been canceled. Uh, and then, you know, there's a, a blip on the radar when my entire show and online existence has been deleted. Uh, by the way, I, if, if people are wondering, you know, what my plan is, I, I have created patreon.com slash Lee camp. If I get enough uh, members, it's, there's a chance I could create something that at least has a bit of the feel of redacted tonight. It will never be the same thing. Um, and it will never be in a big, you know, giant news studio, but it, uh, hopefully will, will fill some of the, the hole in the, in the airwaves and the hole in my heart. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm also curious about this as well. Um, to me, I looked at this as I'm looking at it from, economical perspective i saw this as all of these people just lost their job and some people have families that they have to take okay. care of some people have other projects on the side but not necessarily everyone um did rt issue any type of severance to any of you or yeah they so the in their announcement they said we get two months uh severance and you know, I, I, I don't, I don't actually know if that's the, the normal and maybe, maybe three months is, I don't know, but it's, yeah, it's better than nothing for it. Cause you know, there, there, there are, there was a hundred some employees and that was just in the DC office. They had bureaus in New York, Miami, Los Angeles, and it, it all shuttered in, in a day, uh, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they've been going for something like 15 years and I'd been there for eight years. And it, it, it's really sad to see all of that uh, just wiped away in a single day, clearly due to U.S. sanctions. And meanwhile, this is being celebrated uh, by much of the press, you know, for the ones that even mention it. Um, and not just the press, but uh, but liberals in general are just celebrating this type of censorship. And they don't seem to understand or care that, well, who gets censored first? Yeah, first, you know, kind of the test balloon was Alex Jones, who, you know, I find him pretty repulsive. But I, at the time, I said, this isn't just going to be Alex Jones. This will be the new normal. This will be how it goes uh, going forward. And sure enough, a couple of years after him, we saw uh, the purging of 800 Facebook pages, the deletion all in one day of things like Free Thought Project, Police the Police, a police brutality awareness site, uh, antiwar.com, anti-media. Um, they all deleted in one day and their editors suspended permanently on Twitter simultaneously, meaning that there is, again, a, a cooperation, coordination between two massive corporate entities, some of the biggest tech companies in the world, uh, d despite the fact they're supposed to be adversaries, Twitter and Facebook are not supposed to be working together, what we're told. And yet clearly there is some sort of coordination as to who needs to be uh, deleted from our online airwaves. Speaking of coordination, I noticed that uh, the White House has reached out to TikTok influencers mm -hmm. to get them to do talking points about Ukraine and Russia. And I want to get your opinion on that because I feel like this is very dangerous because they're reaching a lot of young people. And I see young people like repeating these talking points, not knowing the true history, not knowing both sides of the story because the influencers on TikTok are getting across to them and are reaching them. And I want to get your opinion about that. And how do you think, because this is something that's come up a couple of times, people have contacted me and said, you guys need to reach the younger people. How do you think we like as commentators can reach that group, the group that maybe, maybe not on YouTube, but reach like the college kids or the high school students. So I want to get your opinion on that. Well, I do view the, the uh, white house coordinating uh, TikTok talking points to, uh, to have some alliteration there. Uh, I, I find it dangerous, but also, at the same time, I think most of the time they don't have to do that because the uh, the propaganda, the messaging is actually put in people's heads via our media. So most of the time, the White House doesn't actually have to sit down TikTokers and say, here are the 
uh, you know, things we've made up uh, for you to say about what's going on right now. Most of the time that's done just for them by CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, et cetera, PBS, NBC. Uh, that's done for them. And we're, that's really, I'd say, that the far more troublesome thing is just all the people buying the garbage coming out of your mainstream media, coming out of the New York Times, Washington Post. These are outlets that we have proven time and again have lied us into war. And right now they're lying us into uh, the largest Cold War we've seen in decades. And Cold War is not uh, free of fatalities and pain. Cold War and economic war, which is a key part of Cold War, uh, kills tens of thousands. Uh, you know, 100,000 have died in Venezuela alone from our recent economic war on them. So right now they're manufacturing consent for a massive Cold War against Russia, the, the likes of which we haven't seen since, you know, I don't know, the 1970s and 80s. And it, it really is disgusting. And that is the way they, for the most part, get, you know, TikTok and YouTubers and everybody else in line is just the propaganda that's coming out on those levels. Now, to be clear, I, as I've said here and everywhere else, I'm opposed to Putin's invasion, but that doesn't mean you uh, need to cover your ears and, and go, ah, da, 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 every time someone tries to tell you the context of this situation, the expansion of NATO over many years. NATO is a military alliance. You know, the, the putting of missiles and Nazis on the Russian border. Uh, Nazis with actual swastikas on their helmets and uniforms. These are not secret Nazis. These are full frontal, in-your-face Nazis. And the Russians lost 25 million people fighting Nazis in World War II. We lost 400,000. So I guess the Russians uh, have a bit of a sore spot when it comes to uh, funding and arming Nazis on their border. So there's a lot of context here that I think is incredibly important. And your mainstream media doesn't want to give you any of it. And in fact, wants to purge all of those who actually give it from the uh, from the, the, the national discussion. Mm. Someone brought up this uh, recommendation and. You being a comedian, you've you've been on tour, you've been out on the road, and I'm curious what you think about this idea. Someone reached out to us and said that they think that some of us in independent or left independent media need to do a college tour, that we need to go to different colleges and say the same thing that we're saying like on our platforms, but to an audience. What do you think about that idea? Well, I think that's that's cool and fun. Yeah, I toured colleges for years. I uh, played 600 colleges, I think, in five years when I was uh, in my 20s. Um, but I will say this, that for the most part, colleges do not, with, with some obvious exceptions, um, but for the most part, they do not want to bring onto campus uh, actual left-wing speakers. You know, they'll bring mm -hmm. the the kind of standard liberal people, you know, like uh, the, the Rachel Maddow or something that that pretends to be left wing while supporting war, uh, you know, at every turn. So they'll bring those type of people. But will they bring actual, uh, you know, actual leftists, actual people that that actually criticize capitalism? I there are a couple of universities, a few universities that, that I think that's true. But for the most part, that's not really going to happen um, now you can book a, a tour of colleges that doesn't go through the university system where you just kind of play uh, uh, facilities or whatever, um, play events in that town and, you know, see if you can uh, attract the college kids to those type of shows. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. I, I don't know that it, I don't know that it will have the, the type of change that people are uh, imagining because, there's a lot of there's a lot of hurdles to actually getting hundreds, you know, or thousands of college students out to hear people speak, uh, especially with views that are outside of their mainstream media. Because like myself, I can actually relate to this. When I was in college, uh, I was still what I viewed as left wing, but I thought it was, you know, the Democrats were the left wing. Nope. I didn't really understand that there was that was kind of the allowable corporate talking points. And there was something outside of the Democratic Party, the the billionaires that rule the Democratic Party. So and I think that's how most college students are in America. You know, they've been carefully indoctrinated that way. And it's tough to get them to show up to something that's beyond that. That's, you know, little Overton window. That's a good point. I, I noticed our, we always had to have free food. <laughs> we always had to have That'll, food. Help. That'll help a lot. <laughs> 
to get them to come to things. Um, someone brought up this question, and this is a good point. Um, was there anywhere that shows were archived? So do you know if any of your shows from RT were backed up? So I do know that Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E, -E, is a site that apparently backed up uh, most or uh, a lot of the shows, I think you might have had to request that they do it. So for shows that didn't request, it's possible that's not true. But I know that for my show, it is supposedly all on uh, Odyssey, I think, dot com. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to search, how easy it is to find. I haven't really researched that. Um, then we put some of my some of the redacted tonight stuff on my Rockfin, uh, R O K F I N dot com slash Lee Camp, but not that much of it. And then the last thing is, uh, for the moment, I still have access. I assume they'll shut it off soon, but to the uh, back end of, Red of the Redacted Night YouTube page. So I'm trying to get as much of the content as I can uh, while there's still time, but uh, I don't know how long that'll last. And then, of course, once I have that content, it's a question of where do I put it up next? And, and hopefully I can uh, find a way to start putting up those, those back episodes. That's a good point. Um, I'm wondering about this as well. Now, this is coming from Jordan Sheraton. He came up with this idea. He actually recommended that there is one network for left independent media, and everybody can still do their respective like YouTube, Rockfin shows, but one network for left independent media that is not on YouTube. And I thought about this recently because someone informed me and I didn't realize this. I haven't watched David Pakman in a long time and he's in my state. But someone told me that David Pakman ha also has a show on Roku. And I know like they would never let us go on cable. They would never. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about that idea? Like if there was one big left network that was not on YouTube and everybody from left independent media was on that network. Um, yeah, no, I, I, in general, I like the idea of, of, you know, having a place that independent uh, left wing material is. Uh, I, I've a little bit have tried to create that recently, uh, a website, radindiemedia.com, R-A-D-I-N-D-I-E, media.com, um, with Eleanor Goldfield. And we, it's, it's, a, it aggregates a bunch of the best content on the left every day. Uh, it, it's not a, we didn't intend it as some big venture. It's not intended to make money. There's no ads. There's no corporate sponsors. It was just intended as kind of a digital front page for people who wanted actual left-wing independent media. And then the kind of second reason to have it was exactly this, so that when people are deleted from their platforms, if you're going to Rad Indie Media, you're still seeing their work and they're not just disappeared <laughs> like uh, black bagged in the night. So that's why we created it. Uh, we haven't had a lot of time to focus on it, but it does, you know, because it is uh, automatic and, and aggregates, it uh, does have new stuff every single day. And all of the clicks go straight through to the content. So uh, it's, not, it, it's not trying to keep people on our site because it's not, again, trying to make money. So it just channels it straight to people's, to the actual sites of the, uh, of the content creators. And, you know, I think... I don't know if someone can do it better or, or, you know, has some, if someone were to have an advertising budget and create something like that and be able to spend a, you know, a million dollars on letting people know about it, uh, maybe it could be more of a game changer, but, uh, I do think that in general, that's a good idea. Yeah. I've been trying to encourage people, more people to go over to Rockfin and watch Rockfin. Um, I don't know what your experience has been like on Rockfin, but for whatever reason, some of my viewers say, we don't like the platform. So they always come back to YouTube. Uh, what do you think about Rockfin? Do you think that that could be a, a better place for people to go? Or do you think that people are just so conditioned to YouTube? I mean, I think you have to build up the alternatives while you continue to use the massive platforms. Because I don't think people should just delete necessarily their, you know, delete YouTube or Twitter or anything because... They are so massive. I mean, Facebook is like a second internet can, if you look at the sheer number of people that use it uh, and Instagram, which it owns. So it, it, it would be a pity for activists to say, oh, okay, we're all going over to this site that almost no one uses and I'm deleting the platforms that everyone uses and now we can be over there and we can be alone in our little, in our little filter bubble. 
So I think you have to build up the alternatives while continuing to use the tools that are at our disposal. Um, so I, I still use uh, Twitter a bunch, even though it's had a, many of its own problems and own censorship and deleting accounts. And uh, I'm trying to build up this patreon.com slash Lee Camp um, to, to try and create a new, a new uh, something like Redacted Tonight. But I also know that Patreon has had its issues. I know that it's deleted some people for kind of no reason, as far as I know. Uh, so yeah, there's issues there too. Uh, so yeah, I definitely think the, the alternatives have to be built up. Rockfin is one of them. Uh, you know, hopefully in not too long, Panquake will launch and that will be a kind of uncensorable, uh, blockchain alternative to a lot of this. Um, yeah, the, the, the alternatives are, are important and it does seem like they're growing. You know, I, I hear more people talking about alternatives rather than just saying the big three, uh, platforms. Have you looked at, uh, Rumble? Have you had a chance to look at Rumble yet? I just looked at it a little today and, and yesterday, and it, it definitely seems like a, a possibility. Um, I will say that there's no, while, while it is anti-censorship, there's no promise that it couldn't be sold to someone or something like that. So there, there's always going to be a question mark when it's a corporate entity looking for profit. Uh, it could be taken over by, new, by a new board or whatever and, and change its its paradigm fairly easily unless it's it's account you know on the decentralized on the blockchain etc so uh there's there's some questions there but uh it does seem like there there could be something with uh rumble and locals is a is the site that they own uh so yeah may, maybe in the future i want to get your opinion about um the biden administration <laughs> this is gonna be a touchy subject big fan huge <laughs> fan love it <laughs> I want to get your opinion about this. Um, I have been telling people stop voting for the duopoly. If you're going to vote, vote third party or for independent candidates. Uh, some people don't like that message. They're like, well, no, you shouldn't tell people that they need to vote for viable options. And my argument is look at what the Democratic Party is doing. Look at how many times they tell us they don't have money to do things for the American people. They can't give everybody health care because Joe Biden said it's too expensive. We don't have the money yet. They just gave trillions of dollars to people in Ukraine. Uh, we watch them spend money in yeah. the ways that, you know, fits military industrial complex and pleases donors, but not for the American people. And I feel like this is a really good time, especially with the pandemic. A lot of people have been laid off. Unemployment rates are high. This would be the time to really turn the tide, to convince people, listen, this two-party system is not working. We need to do something different. But I also think we need to add direct action with that as well. We need to get people yeah. out in the streets. We have to put pressure on them. What do you think is going to happen come 2024? Do you think that once again, people are going to push people to vote blue no matter who? Yeah. And if if that does happen, I, I just I'm thinking back to Hillary and Jill Stein, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking back to all of these uh, independent media was doing this as well, telling viewers vote for Hillary because you don't want Trump. Meanwhile, Jill Stein was on the ballot in 48 states. Why weren't we telling people to vote for Jill Stein or why weren't they telling people that? So I want to get your opinion about this. If that message comes up again in 2024, vote blue no matter who. How do you feel about people trying to break that cycle and voting for third party or independent candidates? And do you think it could work? Well, in order to answer this, I need to ask you a question. I can curse on here, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a fucking catastrophe and it's designed this way. And they will always say it's the most important election we've ever seen in our lifetime. And we'll hear that every year. And before I even get into just Biden, et cetera, or whatever, Clinton, uh, I think that you'd have to premise these conversations with the amount of time that you or anyone, any activist, anybody watching this, anyone who cares about creating change in this world should spend on discussing the federal elections should be max 5% of their time. 5% of their political discussion. It should be a tiny amount, probably less, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. And the reason is we actually, for the, you know, studies have shown for the most part, cannot create change on the federal level. This system, according to a large 2014 Princeton study, is an oligarchy. It is ruled by a tiny elite business class. When the American people want something to happen like healthcare, it d does not happen. 
at all unless it aligned with corporate interests. So even if, with the example of Obamacare, they had to make sure that aligned with corporate interests to get anything done. So nothing like zero that the American people want that doesn't align with corporate interests will ever get done. This is an oligarchy, and we need to stop thinking that we have some kind of grand ability to alter the mind of these sociopaths. Uh, it, it is just a tiny modicum of influence that we ever have over any of them because they're not getting our, their money from us. That's how they get reelected. The, the, the candidate who, who spends the most money wins 90% of the time in the House and 80% of the time in the Senate. And guess what? The two candidates who spend the most money, meaning millions upon millions of dollars, they win 100% of the time. 100% of the time, the two candidates who spend the most will win the election. So there, there is no reason for us to sit here and spend so much, such a breath to years of our time, even in Britain, where it's also rigged, uh, you know, and corrupt. Uh, they spend what, three months, four months on their election? We spend three years yep. preparing for the presidential election. And for the most part, it serves the purpose of distracting everybody from our reality, distracting us from real action, real change, distracting us from the exact on the ground activism that you were just talking about. And instead, we're just debating over whether you should vote for Biden and Trump. And for the most part, it does not matter. Uh, Joe Biden, as you know, I was ranting and railing uh, going into the election. Uh, I would I would explain how horrific Trump is. And then I would talk about how horrific Joe Biden is. Joe Biden is in many ways. The Democrats are able to create the worst policies because it's done under the guise of not being the Republicans, of not being right wing. I mean, if you look at the prison industrial complex with Biden have craft uh, the largest in the world, we are the largest prison state in the world, both per capita and per number. That's thanks to Joe Biden and a few others. If you look at the Patriot Act that has gutted Americans' rights, that's thanks to Joe Biden and a few others. Uh, you know, if you look at so many things, Joe Biden was there cheerleading for war into every war we've uh, been thrown into. Into the it, the, that, the, est the latest estimates are six million people have died in our wars on terror across the past twenty years. Six million, a million direct deaths and five million indirect deaths, and that's thanks to Joe Biden and his friends. And so, actually, if you look at this, the Democrats are able to get often worse things done than the Republicans because people think it's liberal. They think it's nice and squishy and left wing or, or something. Uh, so I don't see any kind of, of positive change coming from these sociopaths. And we have a unique system in that it really does impressively allow the sociopaths to rise to the top. They say the cream rises to the top. It's the sociopaths that are the cream, apparently because they rise to the top because you have to be a sociopath to put money over all else and you have to put money over all else to be able to do what corporate America wants and get into those seats because the money wins 100% of the time. So I'm not saying don't discuss who you want to win a Senate seat or something, but honestly, 5% of your political discussions should ever have to do with that. The real change, the actual change that could change our world, that could impact people for the positive, that's happening on the ground. That is people fighting pipelines that actually are getting stopped. Uh, things like the Keystone Pipeline, things like the, the 80 million acres of drilling leases that Biden approved in the Gulf of Mexico that have been overturned by the courts. It's happening in the courts a little bit, uh, and it's happening a lot by activists. They slow down these pipelines. They make it not uh, profitable for the company to continue to go through with them. And that's where real change is happening. Mutual aid across this country. Uh, millions of people have been helped by mutual aid hubs around this country during this pandemic, giving out groceries and medical aid to people. Uh, you know, that is, is real help and real change. And the truth is the federal government is, is just bought and owned. Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> I, just, I was saying, you know, uh, recently there was a stream um, called Seize the House and it was Marianne Williamson and Katie Halper and Bree and um, uh, Ju Juliana, I want to say is, is her name. And it was four progressive candidates that are running uh, for Congress. And I think, you know, there was a big uh, awakening, I, I think, um, for them because of the viewers response. And I think people are just at a different place now, like in this country, especially after the pandemic. And my big question that I've had for a long time is, OK, we put these candidates through, but they're going into a party that is owned by Wall Street. And nobody has come to me with any kind of plan to get the money out. 
And I feel like that is the golden question. Like, yeah. how are you going to get the money out when they're attached to Wall Street? Yeah, I, I spent a long time on on money out efforts, um, and I still support them. But I I've come to largely believe that you can't get the money out because the system is the money. The system is owned by these corporate interests that are more powerful than most governments. I mean, corporate interests like Goldman Sachs, et cetera, are, you know, they take in and deal with more money than most countries. And it, it, like you could make some small change maybe in the, in the financial system of American elections, but I, I don't think it would stay for long. Uh, you know, my my term, which uh, so far I haven't heard anyone else uh, claim they came up with it, so I'm going to take credit, is the gravity of capitalism. It's not that you can't, you know, people like to talk about unfettered capitalism. It's not that you can't fetter some level of capitalism a little bit, but the gravity of it is always going to be towards the profit. It's going to be towards the extraction that results in the profit. It's going to be towards the exploitation of workers that results in the profit. And so that gravity can take a long time. You know, it can take a long time for a, for a, a, a galaxy to uh, be sucked into a black hole, but it happens eventually. And so the gravity of capitalism will be towards the capital owning the system. And you just slowly get there. Uh, some countries are slowing it down a little better than us. We're probably the the worst on this scale, but they're all slowly getting there. And to me, that is that is the gravity you're fighting against. Uh, so you've got to break free of the system. Well said. Um, uh, this just came through. Natalie just said Jimmy Dore stream went down abruptly on YouTube and Rumble. Can't wait for Panquake. Ta speaking of Spence censorship, Natalie, can you put in the chat and tell me what was he talking about? I'm I'm curious. Oh boy. Oh boy. He's about to hit 1 million subs too. So there's that as, mm -hmm. as well. But, um, one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to get people to do, and we're going to focus on this, uh, the next, the following weekend, I'm doing a panel for ballot initiatives because a lot of people don't even know that it exists, that they live in a yeah. state that has ballot initiatives. So we've actually gotten a lot done here in Massachusetts through ballot initiatives. That's how we yep. legalized marijuana here. Uh, we did get ranked choice voting on the ballot that didn't pass. And I think that's because uh, most people I talked to said they didn't understand the question. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually glad, glad you brought up ballot issues because something I failed to say in my, in my little rant there is that, uh, I do. I, I, I think you can have more impact, far more impact in local elections, some degree state elections. Uh, they're, they're, they tend to be less rigged by the money uh, than federal. And so I actually think ballot initiatives, you know, I always tell people to vote. I, you know, I, I, I've never said don't vote, but you should just not spend a lot of your time wasted in terms of activism and creating change on voting but locally you can have far more of a, of an impact so yeah ballot initiatives uh can be important and we've seen legalization or, or at least decriminalization of uh, many drugs across the country uh you know to help decrease the the uh, prison industrial complex among other things uh yeah no it, it can be powerful awesome all right lee before you go i have one more question for you what advice would you give to someone who's coming into this space uh, new or wants to come into this space and do independent media in reference to the censorship? Uh, just don't say things that are anti-imperialist. Then you should be good. You know, just like talk about your cat and stuff and then no one uh, ever censors you. Um, I think that honestly, for one thing, have have redundancies, have multiple platforms. I mean, the reason I think I'm 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 still here and people are joining my Patreon, luckily, is because I still have a Twitter, I have a bit of a remaining Facebook, I have I had a second YouTube channel, YouTube Moment of Clarity, that is still there for the moment. It's not very big, but it's still there. Um, you know, have these redundancies in place. Uh, I have a website, LeeCamp.com because they will shut you down, they will suppress you, and hopefully the at least your real fans will go and find those other platforms that are still functioning. So I think that's part of it is, is redundancies. Part of it is build up the platforms that uh, won't do this, that are showing that they aren't censoring, that they aren't stopping people's uh, thoughts and discussion. Um, and another one is, is you know, it, it, it takes a lot of work, and but 
at the end of the day, you're probably doing it because you're passionate about it. It's not an easy way to, to make a living or a, a, a sure way to, to make a living or to have an influence. But if you're really passionate about it, really devote yourself to it, you can, you can get there eventually. Awesome. Well said. Everyone, please uh, donate to Lee's uh, Patreon. Definitely check that out. Lee, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you so much. See you.